So it's finally launched the highly anticipated inverse Kramer ETF. The ETF that does the opposite of whatever Jim Kramer says to do on Mad Money is now a thing. In a filing filed by Tuttle Capital Management, the inverse Kramer ETF and the long Kramer ETF have both been filed for and should be launching shortly. Inverse Kramer trading under SJIM and the long fund trading under LJIM. And as you might expect, Jim Kramer himself has weighed in on what's happening. In a tweet made on Friday, he said, As always, I welcome people betting against me. I have done this for 42 years. Those who know me know that you would have been betting against Apple at 5, Google with Sense Inception, Meta at $18, Amazon at 10, Nvidia at 25, and AMD at $5. I welcome all comers. Clearly, Jim Cramer does not believe that betting against him is a profitable investing strategy. However, a lot of people on Twitter do think that he that betting against him is a good strategy. Inverse Kramer has been a meme for a long time, on Twitter basically forever, and even now and seek, on Seeking Alpha and other places, people are covering this strategy and claiming that it works. But does it work so well? Let's find out. Looking at how the Inverse Kramer ETF is likely to do, it helps to explore Jim Kramer's own track record. Jim Kramer himself has claimed that when he was a hedge fund manager, he was getting about 24% per year. That would be a market beating return in just about any market. However, these claims are belied by his track record subsequently making public predictions. There's a Wikipedia article on Jim Cramer that includes a list of calls Jim Cramer has made over the years, and some of them are pretty bad. No doubt he has made some good predictions, but he's also made some pretty bad ones. A few calls covered in the Wikipedia article include January 2022, close to the peak of the dot com bubble, Kramer recommended investing in technology stocks and suggested a repeat of the performance of 1999. That prediction clearly did not come true, although a lot of those stocks probably would have done well in the 20 years after hitting a bottom. On October the 6th, 2008, on today, Kramer suggested pulling your money out of the S&P 500 for five years. For five months or so, people who were following Kramer were beating the market if they'd stayed all in cash. However, they also missed on a they also missed out on a 5-year 58.7% return. So in the end, that call ended up being a bad one. He was criticized for giving bad advice in the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. In particular, he recommend investing in Bear Stearns, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, Wachovia, and Lehman Brothers all before the bailouts. So most of these companies, their stocks went down in price after Kramer's call and Lehman actually went out of business. Finally, a 2009 Wall Street Journal article claimed that betting against Kramer's buy recommendations using short-term options would yield 25% in a month. So certainly we've got a track record of some very bad picks by Kramer. However, if his tweet that I showed at the beginning of this video is accurate, then he also made some good calls. Notably, the Wall Street Journal article claiming that betting against Kramer's picks in 2009 would have yielded 25% in a month. Well, that was just right after the bottom in the financial crisis. So yeah, you probably would have made some money betting against Kramer then. Likewise, there was a Seeking Alpha article recently that claimed you would have made money betting against Kramer this year. However, the thing is, this year has been a beer market and Kramer's picks are usually long. So it, it, it's not really suggesting that he's underperforming the market chronically or losing money chronically. However, this year in particular, I think that Seeking Alpha article makes a pretty good case that betting against Kramer would have made some money. Looking at Jim Cramer's track record, we can see that he's made a lot of bad calls. The question is, why has he made so many bad calls? To answer that question, it helps to look at the different philosophies of portfolio management. In general, the most commonly used strategy is to diversify widely. The more you diversify, the more baskets you spread your eggs across and the lesser your risk. Specifically, there's two kinds of risk in the stock market. There's specific risk, which is the risk in one specific asset. Let's say a pharmaceutical company doesn't get its patent approved. 
And market risk is the risk in the whole market that affects all stocks. Let's say the Fed raises interest rates and the whole market goes down, even if a, an individual company in it is doing well. And the other philosophy in portfolio management is the concentrated portfolio, which is the strategy that Charlie Munger, Lee Lu, Warren Buffett, and others advocate, which says basically, if you're going to be actively managing investments, you should concentrate your portfolio because you can only have meaningful knowledge about a tiny, tiny handful of stocks. And among active managers who have done pretty well, this philosophy is very common. Because the mathematics of wide diversification with index funds is pretty sound. If there are two types of risk, market risk and specific risk, and with a portfolio of thousands and thousands of stocks that you're not even trying to pick individually has no specific risk, then yes, it should be less subject to disasters over the long run compared to a small portfolio of individual stocks that are picked randomly. On the other hand, if you're picking stocks actively, it does make sense to have a relatively small number of them because you can't do meaningful research on a thousand stocks. The human brain just can't keep that much information in it at one time. And even if you had a photographic memory, the hours and hours and hours of research you'd have to do every single day to meaningfully follow a thousand stocks, nobody is likely to be able to do that much research. This gets back to something that Charlie Munger said once when explaining why Berkshire Hathaway did so well. He said, we never thought that we could get really useful information on all subjects like Jim Cramer pretends to have. Not only does this explain Berkshire Hathaway's success, they only invest in things that they really think they can understand thoroughly, it also explains Jim Cramer's bad calls. On Mad Money, he is covering just a countless universe of stocks, and if you add up all the stocks he talks about in the run of a year, there is no way that somebody could have done adequate research into all of them. And that's why you end up with a track record for Jim Cramer that includes such horribly bad calls, because nobody is really capable of doing adequate research on as many stocks as Jim Cramer is covering. Finally, I can get into how I think the inverse Kramer ETF is likely to do. And basically what I think is going to happen is that it will probably overperform in bear markets, but underperform in bull markets. You see, the thing about Jim Cramer's track record is there's very compelling evidence that he has underperformed. I'm not seeing any evidence that his picks have chronically lost money over the long term. Jim Cramer, his whole flaw is that he tries to cover too many stocks and he ends up with a track record that looks very, very similar to what you would get if you were just picking stocks randomly. In bear markets, given that he's mostly doing long picks, uh, betting against him is going to do very well. But on the other hand, betting against the S&P 500 will do very well at a much lower fee than this inverse Cramer ETF is likely to charge. And in bull markets, I would highly suspect that Kramer's picks will underperform compared to the S&P 500, but probably deliver some kind of positive return. So people investing in the inverse Kramer ETF, I think they might do reasonably well short term, but as a long term bet, I do not think that this fund is likely to be the best out there. Kramer, I think there's a strong case to be made that he has a long track record of underperformance, but if stocks maintain a basically long-term bullish trajectory, then his picks do stand a chance of at least giving a positive return to one degree or another. There you have it, my take on the inverse Jim Cramer ETF. Ultimately, this ETF could outperform as long as we stay in a bear market, but it's likely to underperform in bull markets. You know, the Jim Cramer, the inverse Cramer meme is a very funny one, and Jim Cramer largely deserves it because he goes out in public giving opinions on stocks with nowhere near adequate research. But at the end of the day, this is an active ETF that's likely to charge very large fees, and if the long-term historical trajectory in stocks remains a positive one, then Jim Cramer's picks on average will probably produce some kind of positive return, albeit way behind the S&P 500. That's it for me today. Bye.